Splitting data ensures that there are independent sets for training, testing, and validation. And when we talk about splitting data, we're, we can either do it ourselves with some indices that we control, or we're also going to use this sklearn package that's part of scikit-learn. And we can either use the method of splitting by if we have X and Y separately, or if we just have one data frame, we can split it out uh, based on what we have as an input. So we're gonna go through this example together. First of all, just importing the data that is, uh, let's say from this URL, uh, I'm just gonna put this URL in here and then we're gonna read that data. If you wanna just see the data for that, here's some temperature control lab data that we generated earlier and it's available on the web as well. So we'll first of all, uh, just run this and then import, we'll import pandas as PD. And let's, let's go ahead and just look at this data. I'll do pd.read CSV to read in the URL. And then let's just look at the data head. Okay, so we can see the data here. Maybe we wanna make the time our index so I'll just do data dot set index and we'll set that as time and let's just do in place equals true so that we don't have to say data equals we can just say data uh, set index okay so you can now see that time is now the index of this now we'll want to insert a cell below shift enter will do that for you and let's import from sklearn. We're gonna import from model selection. And this one is the function that we use, train test split. And with it as a data frame, okay, we're gonna have our training and test set, and we can use a train test split with data as the input. And then test size, we can control the fraction that's saved for testing. And then we can say shuffle equals true or false. So I'm gonna say false because this is time series data and the order matters in terms of uh, the time. Okay, so let's go ahead and just uh, do this one and then let's see what train looks like. You can see it preserves it as a data frame and also test is there as well. And that starts 80% of the way through with the test set. Okay, so that's the first way of splitting the data. If you wanna just do it yourself, uh, you know, without using the train test split, you could also say train equals data, and then everything from zero up to the length of data times 0.8, and don't forget to make that into an integer. Okay, and that will also give you uh, similar results in terms of uh, training. And then you could say something like, let's create our test as well. And then we would wanna do um, this as our starting index and then go all the way to the end. Oh, I, uh, let's see, index and then to the end. Okay, so the colon right there will take you all the way to the end. And there you have uh, 721 rows. So you can either use a train test split or you can just do it yourself, especially if it's sequential, that's nice. If you have to shuffle it, it's much easier just to set shuffle equals true here and let that take care of the random selection of which ones are in the train and which ones are in the test set. Okay, so I'm gonna delete these two and let's go on to another example. So let's say we just make our own data. I'm gonna say from sklearn data sets, we'll import make classification. Okay, this is used to test several algorithms. Uh, you can make classification data sets and control how they're made. I'm gonna just make that with X comma Y. And this one is make classification. 
and number of samples equals 5,000, number of features equals 20, and number of informative equals 15. So not all of them are informative, and I need to set that as features instead. Okay, and now let's just look at X, for example. You can see it's a NumPy array, not a pandas data frame. And one of the things that we'll be able to uh, do here is, is show that we can also um, do NumPy arrays, not just pandas data frames. So I'm going to have X train and then X test. Y train and Y, uh, y test. And that is going to be from the train test split. Now if I have these as separate, so X and Y are separate, then I can put those in as two arguments and then it's going to return four things. So before I did this, it only returned two because I had all of my data there as a data frame all in one set. But if you have them split into the features and the labels, then in this case, you'll get four things that return. Now the same thing can apply for the other arguments. So test size is 0.2. And then we could say shuffle equals true now to randomly select some values from that set. This is not a time series data set, so the order doesn't matter. And we can shuffle and pick uh, random points to be able to fill in our train and test sets. Okay, and if you want to check that, you could you know print out the length of X train. So that's going to be 4,000. And that took 80% of the 5,000. And then let's look at test as well. Okay, so there's 1,000 on those. And let's see if I do, uh, let's see, NumPy. I guess I don't have NumPy here yet. So import numpy as mp, then you can see that's uh, 20,000. And uh, if you say I want just the first dimension of that, that's 1,000. And then the second dimension, that's going to be 20. So I have 20 features. So it's a 1,000 by 20 matrix. Okay, uh, let's go on to the next one now. Okay, so let's, there's sometimes where you're a little bit low on data and you don't have a lot of data to use for validation. And so you want to use something called cross validation, or in this case, it's going to be a function called kfold. And I'll show you how to use that. It's going to set these up for you so that you can iterate through and successively use 20% or however much you want, 20% of your data as the validation set or the test set. And so you can train it on the other 80%, but then the new 20% that's there, you can test it on all of those. So you can have five different tests as 20% is successively used for the, the testing. Okay, let's also import a decision tree decision tree classifier and then let's look at some metrics as well we'll import an accuracy score so this is going to be the percentage or fraction of misclassifications and then also a confusion matrix as well and then from sklearn uh, data sets We'll import, make classification. And then let's visualize some things as well. Uh, if we need to, we can get Seaborn in there. And then uh, let's get matplotlib. And then numpy. OK, so there are some of my packages that I want. Let's make our classification again. I'm just going to take, let's take this one right here. And, and then uh, we'll just use that for our classification uh, data set. 
Now let's create a K fold. This is uh, K fold number of splits equals five. So we're going to take 20% at a time. And we can say shuffle equals true. So it's going to randomly select those, but then it'll keep track of which ones are in each set. Let's initialize a decision tree classifier. And then let's create a place where we can store some of our scores. We just need five of those. Okay, for the equal to the number of splits. Now let's initialize our plot because we're going to loop through this and go ahead and do 5% at a time or 20% at a time, one fifth. And create this loop. Okay, so this is where this K fold really comes in is we're going to enumerate on K fold split of x. Okay, so we will have the things that return from enumerating that are going to be the i value, and then we have train index, and also the test index. Okay, we're going to have k fold split Okay, so the very first thing we'll need is just x train and x test are going to be equal to x, and this is going to be train index, and then x test index. Okay, same thing for y, and this will be y train and y test. So I'm just going to rename these. Okay, so I'm going to put each one into these X and Y train. And then let's go ahead and fit the decision tree classifier with these data sets. And then get a prediction. So decision tree classifier will predict based on X test. And then get an accuracy score as well. Y test and YP, and then I can put that accuracy score into the array. Okay, so that's scores, and that'll be my accuracy. Now, if I wanted to make that just a little bit simpler, I could just get rid of accuracy there and have scores. And if I wanted to, I could say, you know, just replace this one, okay, here. But just to make it a little bit easier to read, I'm just going to redefine them up here. All right, let's make our subplots now. And that's going to be 1 to 5, i plus 1. So we're going to make uh, just columns for each one. And we'll get our confusion matrix, yp, y test. And then SNS will use a heat map. Okay, and we'll annotate and then we'll show the plot. So it's going to run through these and it's excessively used 20% of the data each time for this one. And you can see the misclassifications. Here are the misclassifications here. Overall, it did fairly well, 420, 440 correctly classified. And then here on the off diagonals, these are the false positives and false negatives. And you can see the misclassifications. Now, let's just show the accuracy of this as well. We have the scores. So I'll just go ahead and uh, print. Okay, those are the accuracy scores. And let's go ahead and just print the mean of those. Okay, I'll format this with two decimal points. And 
let's go ahead and just do a percent. Okay, so this is the older way of formatting, but um, still works. Okay, and there's our accuracy score, 82.82%. Uh, is on average the accuracy. Now you can see some of them are a little bit lower, 81, some of them a little bit higher, 84. But in this case, we really haven't thrown away any data. We've just successfully used different parts of the data for the testing. We'll use the other 80% for the training. Okay, so that is the information on splitting data. That is... Um, this module right here on data engineering and overall the flow of machine learning and data engineering are that we're going to first of all collect data we'll potentially use a digital twin maybe a physics-based digital twin to generate more data if needed we'll combine data sets into this consolidated uh, visualize do correlations distributions and pair plots perform a data assessment if we have the right type of data and the correlations, we use, um, we'll go on to outlier detection and filters to remove the, any bad data. But if not, we'll use feature engineering and also search for more data that increases the data diversity for the intended application. We'll clean the data, scale the data, and then this is our split right here. where We split it into the train, validate, and test. And one other thing that we didn't cover here is that this final category, okay, this validation, that's when you want to do something like hyperparameter optimization. So for example, in a neural network, you don't know the number of layers you need or the number of, of uh, nodes or the type of function that you're gonna use, maybe a rectified linear unit or hyperbolic tangent or sigmoid. And so this helps you split that off so that the training and the validation can go together and it can iterate through the training with those different hyperparameters until it achieves a good independent fit on the validation set. And then finally, you then test whatever you have on this final set that's completely independent of anything that you've used for training. Okay, so splitting is very important because if you train and test on the same data, then you might have an unreasonably good expectation about how that's going to perform on new data. And so the reason why we split is so that we can maintain those independent so that when we train and validate and get our new hyperparameters, when we finally make it over to testing, it's very representative of what we could expect when we get new data that we want to be able to evaluate the accuracy on that and be able to have some type of um, some type of understanding of the expected accuracy also the other thing we can do when we're training for example with a neural network we'll often have the loss function that will go down and that will be for the training okay and then we often also plot a loss function for the test set and when that starts to go up, then we know we've overfit. Okay, so there's our test set. And if it starts to increase, then we know that we have overfit the model. We probably want to stop at about that point. Okay, so many applications of why we, why we split the data and maintain those separate, those separate, um, data frames or those separate NumPy arrays for the validation.